We're talking the draft, and hey, March Madness is over, but we're still talking college basketball. This is Incompetent Sports Talk. Welcome to Competent Sports Talk, along with Mike Raven, Jordan Lopreina. I'm Alex Salzma, and it was a great draft weekend for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They had six players drafted. That was the third most in college football, and that was the most for any Hawkeye team since 1966. Brian Balaga went 23rd to the Green Bay Packers in the first round. Pat Anger, 63rd to Indianapolis in the second round. Amari Spivet, 66th to Detroit in the third round. Tony Moyaki, 93rd to Kansas City in the third round. A.J. Eads, 119th to Miami in the fourth round. And Kyle Callaway, last but not least, to the Bills at 216th. Also three Hawkeye, or actually Trey Strauss is a free agent signed with the Texans. And Dace Richardson and Dan Doran getting tryouts with their respective teams. Mike, quite a weekend. What were your take on it? I'm happy to see where Bulaga went. The Packers were 11-5 last season, but their only real weakness was their offensive line. They gave up a, a lot of sacks and Aaron Rodgers didn't have a lot of time uh, to work in the pocket. Bulag is the kind of guy that you can install into that line. He's got a fantastic work ethic. He's got a lot of football smarts, and he's the kind of guy you want on that offensive line. I'm a bit surprised that he dropped down to 23rd. I thought he might go a little higher, but nonetheless, it's great to see a Hawkeye get drafted in the first round. And then I'm also excited to see Pat Anger go to the Indianapolis Colts, another yeah. Iowa guy going to the Colts. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, now we have Bob Sanders, Dallas Clark, Pat Anger, and of course the coach, Col Jim Caldwell, mm -hmm. for the Colts. And that's, that's impressive. I mean, you can go down the line about all well, these guys. And, and uh, I believe uh, Mitch King uh, was working out with the Colts towards the end of last season. I think he'll be a part of at least their practice squad this year. So, and Jordan, what do you think about the draft? I was very happy for Iowa. Um, finally, um, we're getting, you know, kind of national respect. You know, people didn't have many bad things to say about these Iowa guys. Mm -hmm. One thing, you know, a lot of these guys that were getting taken in the third round, uh, it was said they had first round talent. I'm not talking about Hawkeyes, I'm talking about anyone in the third round that was getting taken. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were saying they have first round talent, fifth round character. They're getting drafted in the third round for that reason because character has become such an issue in the NFL. Maybe with more eight, so than ever in this Maybe draft. more so than ever, yeah. especially with what recently happened with Ben Roethlisberger, stuff like that. You will not have that kind of problem coming out of Coach Ferentz's program here in Iowa City. Um, every single one of those guys, great character. Um, yeah, two of them left early, but you know what? I think we've kind of learned, you know, especially a guy like Amari Spave, his story parallels that of Sean Green's. Um, you know, he wasn't working in a furniture store, but I don't know what he was doing in that year that they both were away from the team, mm -hmm. came back, immediately became an NFL caliber uh, draft prospect. And I was happy to see uh, Mari go, uh, really happy to see us get a first round guy. Got a little concerned uh, about Balaga going in the first round as mm -hmm. it kept getting later and later. But um, I'm a Bears fan, but that pick was a, a phenomenal pick by the, the Green Bay Packers. They absolutely needed to beef up that O-line, as you mentioned, Mike. Uh, the last year, that was really their only true weakness. Um, they didn't have many weaknesses. They went 11-5. and five. Uh, If they had even a mediocre offensive line last year, you, you want to imagine what a team like that could do. Uh, they've got arguably the best quarterback in the NFL, and they uh, paid up to protect him. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, guy I'm extremely happy for. You guys know this. A.J. Eads. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't be happier to see him go. Uh, yeah, I know he's excited about going back to Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think any player would after oh, the yeah. experience <laughs> Iowa had down there. But, um, you know, just a, a great guy, uh, a really good person on and off the field. And uh, he, he, you know, we said all along kind of, uh, you know, on the radio that he's going to be a guy that is going to end up being a steal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, same with a guy like Moyaki. But A.J., uh, just an intelligent, he's the type of guy, if you're an owner, you want someone like that on your team. And you'd like someone to that, like that to even, you know, rise to be one of the faces of your team because he's just that good for a franchise. He was that type of person for Coach Ferentz, um, you know, with Iowa, one of the faces of this Iowa football team. And 
Uh, I, I have no doubts that uh, he has the capabilities of doing the same in, in Miami. Yeah, he's A.J. Eads is a cerebral linebacker. He really mm -hmm. sees the field extremely well. He doesn't make stupid decisions, and he's got quickness that is a little bit deceiving. I mean, you, you've seen throughout his career at Iowa, if you followed him closely, there were times <coughs> Scott Tolzien, uh, Nesbitt, other quarterbacks who didn't see the speed that A.J. Eads has, but he has the, that deceptive quickness and that cerebral approach to the game that, like you said, Jordan, will really benefit him in the NFL. And this, this draft was deep in terms of tight ends. I believe 21 tight ends were drafted in this NFL draft. And Tony Moyaki going fourth, despite all of his injuries and hardships because of those injuries at the University of Iowa, to still go fourth shows, uh, shows to me that NFL scouts were really impressed with his <coughs> physical abilities and, his, uh, again, his, his hands to catch the ball and his blocking. He's such a dual threat tight end. I, think he, I hope that he will have a good career if he's in Kansas City. Well, and Coach Ferentz mentioned more than once last season that um, he believed Tony was probably the most athletic person on the team. I think two of the most athletic players in this draft we're tight ends. You have Tony Moyaki, if he's healthy, and Aaron Hernandez out of uh, Florida. Uh, both of those tight ends, I think, are arguably you know some of the most athletic players in this year's draft. And uh, you know when you get to the NFL, you, you, you get to the NFL because you do have the talent and you do have the skills. But it's stuff like athleticism and, and other intangibles that that'll get you playing time and and get you uh, you know where you want to be. St. Bradford went number one. Mm. Sue went number two. If you got the number one pick, would you have taken Bradford Jordan or would you have taken Sue? And Mike, I want to get your opinion on this too. I would have taken Ndamukong Sue. Um, reason being, uh, Sam Bradford hasn't played in an, in, in an entire game in over a year. Uh, the last, in, I believe the last full game he played in was in the national title game against Florida, which he lost. And uh, you know, yeah, he had a lot of time to, you know, get ready. I really think that Jimmy Clausen was the most prepared future, it has the brightest future, I guess, of any quarterback in this draft. But I, I just, I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, I know what the Rams are trying to do. I understand the route they're taking. They need a quarterback. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I, when you have a guy like Ndamukong Su, he was a Heisman candidate as a defensive <coughs> tackle. It, you need to be a game changer to be a guy like that. Yeah, he might not throw you, you know, 30 plus touchdowns a year uh, like Sam Bradford could end up doing, but he could essentially shut down an opposition's running game. You know, and, and they got Chris Long a few years <coughs> ago in the draft. Uh, so that, that's a D-line that has, has promise uh, if you had a guy like that, but um, you know, I mean, Bradford wasn't a terrible pick. Personally, though, I like the trench battles. I, I might have gone for uh, uh, a guy like Sue, who's just a game changer. He's a unique guy. You know, you haven't seen a guy like that that dominates at that position the way he does with that kind of size very often. <coughs> I need to apologize for my cough, too. Now, I'm apologizing for my to, playoff beard. We need to get, 